Okay, finally some sketching. So take a second to write down uh, everything here. Pause if need be, probably. Um, so example to illuminate. Let's do x to the five minus five x. So I want to basically all I, I want to get nine here, but um, of course I'll be grading everything here. So, number one, domain. What is the domain of this function? Well, uh, what x's am I allowed to plug in there? Well, any real number can go in for x as a polynomial. Two intercepts. Um, so to find the y-intercept, so where my function hits the y-axis, you know, I set x is equal to zero, what do I get? I get uh, uh, f of zero, zero. Okay, so you get y is equal to zero. So overall, you get this origin is the y-intercept and the only y-intercept. x-intercept, you set y equal to zero or Um, so it's f of x is equal to zero. So x five minus five x is zero. So x uh, x to the four minus five is equal to zero. Um, so x is zero, or maybe I should write bigger. Right? Uh, x is equal to the fourth root of five. Uh, four through five. What is that? Something between um, something between one and two, like closer to one. So this one, you'll have a calculator, so you can get the exact number if you need it, but uh, it won't be that important. So from here we get zero zero again. And from here we get um, fourth root of five. Zero. Okay, three. Behavior for larger values of x. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. Well, it's That's limit x to the 5 minus 5x. Okay, so x to the 5 is obviously the dominant term, so I get plus infinity here. And also do the limit when x goes to minus infinity. So I want to see what is happening to my function when I go very far to the left. Again, the only thing that matters is the x to the 5. So power 5 on a negative number gives me minus infinity. OK, asymptotes, uh, we will talk about these later. So this one, we'll just say for now, this one, we'll just say no asymptotes. Um, polynomials don't have asymptotes. We'll talk about asymptotes later. Okay, intervals of increase and decrease. Um, so I need to find f prime. So I get f five x four minus five. Set that equal to zero. So I'm going to find the critical numbers. Um, I get plus or minus one. Hmm. Um, if you're looking for critical numbers, you should also at least think about you know, the question, when does f prime not exist? Uh, but for a polynomial, f prime will always exist. So we'll skip that here. 
So x is equal to plus or minus one. I put those in a number line. And I do test points. And I would just do it mentally, just plugging in here, underline the purple. So if I plug in negative two, um, I get positive, five times a positive number. If I plug in, say, zero, I get five times a negative number. And if I plug in, say, two, I get uh, five times a positive number again. So my function is increasing, then it's decreasing, and then it's increasing again. And that will be sufficient if you just give me that number line. Okay, I can see just by looking at that number line, everything I need to see. Six, 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 relative extrema, right? Relative extrema, yeah. So local max, local min, I need to find all these. Okay, if I look at my number line here, I can see, you know, local max at uh, minus one and a local min at pl x equals plus one. Um, so should I, I need at this point to calculate the corresponding y values. So x is equal to minus one. What is the corresponding y value? You know, plug it into your original function, you get minus one plus five and you get four. Um, and just say this is a local max. And the point here, the point is x is negative one, y is four. I'll be using that later on my graph. F of one is one to the five minus five times one, which is uh, negative four. Local min, and the point is one negative four. Yeah, so it'll all be very useful later. Okay, I'm going to underline. This is the local max, okay, the y value. And this is the local min, the y value. So for part six here, you have to calculate these things. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Seven. What is seven? I have no idea. Concavity? Yep. Concavity. So intervals of concavity. I'm being very short for me there. Um, so that's the second derivative that governs concavity. So f double prime is 20x cubed. Um, equals 0 when x is 0. OK, which leads me to a number line for concavity. Now, test points again, looking here, looking here, looking here. If I plug in a negative number, I get a negative number there. If I plug in a positive number, I get a positive number. So I am concave down here, concave up here. All right, what's next? Eight. Inflection points, I believe so. Points of inflection, inflection points. Do, 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 do. Now, well, I'm just going to look at my thing I did here. And I can see that at x equals zero, there's an inflection point. So IP at x is zero. And again, I have to find the corresponding y value. And f of zero is um, a zero. So we'll say the IP is the origin zero, zero. Okay, finally I can graph this thing. Oh, this is not 
easy to do on a tablet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my information from parts one through eight and put it together and draw a picture. So I was I would start by having a look at my numbers here, so my points, right? Oh, here we go. These are good points. Okay, I got these points here. And I got the origin, right? I go through zero, zero. Uh, oh, good thing I came back up here. I just found a mistake. So zero, zero. Uh, uh -huh. So I'm missing a plus or minus here. Plus or minus. Plus or minus. It's one of those mistakes that I make on purpose because it's instructive. Okay, so I got zero, zero, and I got these points here. I'll start by just plotting those points. Um, oh, that's not a very straight line. This is not going to be straight, 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 straight. Much better, Jordan. Good job. Um, so zero, zero, go through zero, zero. And what did I say? One, negative four, negative one, four, negative one, four, right? Yeah, negative one, four. So based on my numbers I saw above, I can choose a scale that makes good use of the uh, paper or screen or whatever you're working on. Um, So I'll put negative one here, one here, four here, minus four here. Okay, so where are these points? Zero, zero. And then we said uh, negative one, four, and then one, four. And there's two, there's minus two. Now what else do we have? Um, connect the dots? Well, kind of. Mm, this guy up here, I know it's a max, right? So I can draw a little hill there. And this is a min down here, so I can draw a little valley down here. Now I have to go through this point here. Well, I should zero, zero. I should do so in an educated manner. So look at my concavity. Concavity is concave down for x is less than zero, concave up for x is bigger than zero. So I should draw it. Okay, I'm gonna start drawing from negative one, four. So I'm going concave down, 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 down. And then I'm gonna just switch right there. Now I'm trying, it's not easy, but Try to draw up, 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 concave, up, 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 and something like that. Um, this continues to be concave down, 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 down. And we said it crosses somewhere between one and two. It doesn't really matter where you do it. And I put a little arrows to indicate that this continues. Um, if you're having trouble, so this is an inflection point, zero, zero. You know, concavity should switch there, but if you're having trouble drawing that, because it's awkward to draw, just label it with a little IP there. Okay, at this point, I should compare my graph with what I've calculated in parts one through eight. So I should just double check that the concavity makes sense. Uh -huh. And maybe more interestingly, this, increasing, decreasing uh, number line. So it should be going up, then down, then up again. And you can see that's what's happening, right? It is increasing and decreasing and then increasing again. So everything looks ship-shape. 